In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're very welcome to the Brendan Option, coming to you courtesy of Immaculata Productions. I'm Father Brendan Kilcoyne. If you like our work, would you please hit the subscribe button? Maybe consider contributing to us on Patreon or PayPal. Contribute to us spiritually. Please, by all means, keep us in your prayers and uh, keep the the, uh, constructive criticism coming. Uh, We appreciate it all. His winnowing fan is in his hand. Hmm... There's a there's a there's a powerful message there in Luke in Luke three there today. It's intimidating. It's a bit frightening. Even he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Uh, and 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 some people won't be happy. But if you go back to Zephaniah and the church places readings together, you know. If you go back to Zephaniah in the first reading there, you can see that marvellous message again that we had from Baruch last week. Rejoice, daughter of Jerusalem. Rejoice, rejoice. Where, where Zephaniah says, not only will your Lord forgive you, but he will redeem you with his love and he will dance with joy at your return. It's just an incredible thought, a thought of God dancing with joy at the repentance of one human soul. Tremendous thought. And then you go to Luke in the Gospel. And here we have people asking John for his teaching on various things. And he's teaching in prefigurement of the Master, if you've two tunics, you know, give somebody else the spare one and, and, and so on. But they ask him if he's the Christ. It would have been so easy for John to try to usurp his cousin. It would have been so easy for him to do that. Just as it would have been so easy for Jesus to make a magnificent earthly career for himself and abandon the will of his father in his own divine nature and his own indeed perfect human nature. But they don't. We know Jesus didn't. We know John didn't. When they, when they ask him what he is, John tells them in eff- effectively, I'm the drummer boy. I'm the messenger. I'm going before him. There's someone coming after me. I'm not fit to do like a slave. I'm not fit to undo the strap of his sandal. I'm not fit to do the most menial office for him. And he says it proudly, exuberantly. He's like the lover dancing. He's like God as lover dancing, dancing at the return of the soul in Zephaniah. He says it exuberantly. His winnowing fan is in his hand. His winnowing fan, his thrashing floor is ready. So that the judgment is coming. But... There's a way out. And it is God himself who gives it. Because those who are excluded from salvation are those who exclude themselves from salvation with full knowledge, free will and all the rest of it. All you have to do is take what's on offer. That's all you have to do. I'm struck by the integrity of John. He doesn't miss a beat. He doesn't put a foot wrong. Yeah? It's a, it's a bravura performance. In, in, you'd nearly be proud of him because John is a broken human being like the rest of us, albeit a great saint. But you'd be proud of him. That's the best of our fallen nature. He rings true. He conveys the word of God that he has been given. He refuses blandishments. He refuses the respect that's being poured on him by those who think he's the redeemer. He points, 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 points all the time to the one who's coming after. Not me. Him. Wait for the boss. And you're going to be blown away by him. And that's what John tells 
I think that's a powerful message this Advent. It's a powerful message for us to hear. Wait till your father gets home. Wait till the boss sees this. Transparency, accountability. These are phrases that ring with fear. But when we're told by John his winnowing fan is in his hand, now you're going to get it. And yet we have already been assured by Zephaniah scriptures with which you can be sure John was intimately familiar. The Lord will dance, dance, as John danced before Christ in in, in the womb of Elizabeth. The Lord will dance over your repentance if you come back. It's not a question of, well, if I crawl and eat the proverbial, he'll take me back. He'll take you back, brazen as, well, I don't know pretty brazen he'll take you back with you the neck to strut back he'll take you back if you come back full of attitude full of welcome for yourself all he wants is you back all he wants is you back and and if if you miss that message the beauty of advent will be wasted on you this is the royal road this is the royal road The voice crying in the wilderness, prepare the royal road, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths, every mountain, every valley. Like a Roman engineer planning a road, straight, even. Make clear the way of the Lord into your heart. Let the valleys be filled in and the mountains lowered. May clear his way into your heart so that he can rejoice at your return. The message of Advent is overwhelmingly positive. It is a message full of love. And I point out to you that it is most of all aimed at those who are furthest, furthest, from the church and from the way and from the path at this moment. You are beloved. You are beloved. He is besotted with you. Come back. This Christmas, come back to the faith. Come home. Listen to me. What's crucial is how you end. We all begin badly. We all make a mess of it. What's crucial is that you arrive. There is no supplying for that. No substitution for it. Come back. That he may dance before you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.